Hello, this is John Kanellopoulos. It's really a pleasure to share with you from our office here, our center actually in Athens, Greece, this very exciting case. This was a 78-year-old um, lady who had an IOL dislocation. You can see the IOL here that's displaced posteriorly. Um, this is her left thigh that's the problematic. We see here the uh, wide view optus uh, images of the fundus, both eyes, and her macula here right before we start the IOL exchange. Interestingly enough, and this is the beauty of uh, screening patients carefully, she has keratoconus. I mean, first time diagnosis in our screening, the initial procedure was done elsewhere. She had a single piece uh, acrylic IOL, and we can see clearly here on the uh, sign fluke uh, tomographies that she has keratoconus that has been silent throughout all her life. These are some of the IOL measurements interferometry here with the Tomei device. We, of course, will evaluate the cell count, make sure that she's able to have uh, the IOL exchange surgery, and the lens star biometries will follow. And I was talking about the keratoconus diagnosis, which is really more relevant, uh, not only for her, but her, for her family. We want to screen, especially uh, her young, uh, if she has any teenager grandsons, uh, being Greek, uh, there's a very high probability that her grandsons need to be screened carefully for keratoconus. We're choosing here uh, a, the plus uh, 20 lens for emetropia. This is the artisan iris claw lens that will be placed behind the iris, so the uh, A constant changes, a conjunctival pyridomy. Some of the old uh, techniques are employed here bipolar cautery to attain hemostasis. Nice uh, scleral show will measure six millimeters, although the lens is uh, actually five in its smaller diameter, but we need six to pull the. Uh, old IOL in the capsule bag out. And although I'm sure you were not impressed with the displacement uh, viewed on the uh, initial clinical picture, a crescent blade here, we're going uh, two and a half millimeters from the limbus to create a nice uh, scleral corneal tunnel. Some of our glaucoma techniques here, reminiscent of my days of uh, glaucoma fellowship, uh, clinical fellowship at Mass Ioneer. I want to thank all my mentors there many, many years ago. So here we're going and creating uh, the uh, corneal scleral tunnel and uh, the keratome to get a small initial incision. You can see I'm going in through clear cornea and thus uh, this incision will be watertight at the end of the procedure. Regardless of the fact that it's six millimeters in length, I'm going to use the same keratome to create two smaller paracentesis of about one millimeter each. And um, you saw me going in, this is the left eye initial nasally, and now we'll go in uh, temporally. And we can kind of see the trembling of the IOL, and now that the fact that I'm seeing uh, clearly the edge of the IOL with capsule bag, and the lens is displaced here anteriorly, although when the patient is uh, standing up, the lens was displaced inferiorly. So I'm going to use the Sinsky and the Kuglin hook to flip the lens up. You can see the ease with which there's really no capsule support. The lens is probably hanging in from uh, a dozen uh, zanyos of, of zin. And I'm going to place some more viscoat behind the lens, give me some leverage. A little stress here, we don't want the lens to drop into the vitreous cavity. I will enlarge my uh, the corneal part of my corneal scleral tunnel with the keratome very careful here not to go off and lose the water tightness that this uh, carefully designed and executed incision has. And uh, again, my Kuglin hook will pick up the uh, capsule bag lens uh, complex, and with my lens forceps, I will bring in the lens into the anterior chamber. Very careful here, of course, there's uh, Viscoat, uh, viscoelastic placed in the anterior chamber to protect the endothelium. This is an older lady. We want to make sure that the procedure will not cost any more endothelial cells. And here you can clearly see how the uh, single piece IOL is removed with the capsule bag. Interestingly enough, uh, we're prepared to perform a vitrectomy here, but there's no vitreous present. Um, I'm swiping in with my Kuglin. Um, the, pupilar, the pupil is uh, normal. Uh, thus, uh, we will... Uh, defer the uh, actual vitrectomy and um, we'll use some more viscoelastic. Here is the vitrector now used to just place uh, a erdectomy at the uh, one o'clock position. Several bites 
with a vitrectal aspirator, visco elastic was placed in the anterior chamber, and we'll create a nice um, iridectomy here just to make sure with the retrocorneal placement of the uh, Irish coil IOL, we'll not have any problems with pupillary block. Again, refreshing my visco elastic, nice pupil, no vitreous present in the pupillary aperture, and uh, we'll pick up our lens, uh, flip it upside down. The lens was designed by Professor Wurst to be placed on the iris. The technique has been converted in the recent years. I think we've contributed a body of this new wave of using the lens retropupillary, featured many times in the video journal of uh, cataract procedures, chaired by Bobby Osher, uh, and I want to thank him for that, and of course all his contributions. So we're going to uh, push the lens into the posterior chamber and see how I'm going to use my Sinski through the temporal incision and tilt the lens upward so I can see through the iris the haptics of the lens and push iris through. This is actually not as difficult as it looks right now. It's difficult for me because I'm right-handed and uh, I enclave the iris. You can see how nicely the iris is enclaved in the lens claws uh, with my uh, uh, left hand. And so will I do here. I'm going to use the enclavation needle here. Uh, it gives me better leverage. Again, tilt the lens so the haptics, the temporal haptics now are pushing through the iris and use the enclavation needle to get a good bunch of iris in there to make sure that the lens is, stays stable forever. After all, this later had experienced once an IRL dislocation. Irrigation aspiration, again, no vitreous present. Uh, very uh, pleasant surprise. And uh, we'll remove the viscoelastic, hydrate the incisions, and then close the conjunctiva with bipolar cautery remaining suture-less. Uh, a very uh, quick procedure. Of course, there's alternates to scleral fixation, but uh, I want to advocate this uh, version, which is very simple, less traumatic, less time in the OR, and uh, very quick recovery. I'm going to hydrate here my uh, cornea, part of the cornea scleral tunnel, and here closing in the conjunctiva, remaining sutureless in this procedure, which has very fast recovery. The patient the next day is 20-25, uh, I'm corrected. Very nice result. I hope you found this interesting. This is an uh, alternate to an IOL change, the Irish Claws lens. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. Thanks so much for your attention.